Don't forget to pick up your copy of Football Game Plan's latest book release, The Go-Go Offense by Coach Brennan Marion, as Coach Marion takes you through the ins and outs of his offense, the most explosive offense in college football that's lighting up the scoreboards and tearing up the college football fields. You can pre-order your copy today by going to footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Welcome to Football Game Plan, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Mike McCarthy is your producer today. It's the summertime and preseason is just around the corner in the NFL. And we'll get you ready for the upcoming 2019 NFL season as we preview the Seattle Seahawks. Now, as we kick off the season preview, let us take a look at some of the key storylines heading into the season as we go into our four minute offense. In the Pacific Northwest, the 2018 season may have been quarterback Russell Wilson's best, considering he set a career high in touchdown passes with 35 and tied his career low with seven interceptions. It was definitely his most efficient season, given that Wilson did that on only 427 throws, his least since 2013. If he can keep up the remarkable consistency, he'll be able to keep the Seahawks team on his back and live up to his lofty contract. DK Metcalf has been impressing in Seattle this offseason, according to Russell Wilson. It's no surprise considering that the career he's had at Ole Miss and his mind-blowing NFL Combine performance. Expect big things from Wilson and Metcalf this season with Wilson's accurate deep ball and Metcalf's 4-3 speed. Mikey Potty is the new man in town on the Seahawks offensive line. First, he'll be looking to bolster his new offensive line he's a part of. The Seahawks allowed 51 sacks on Russell Wilson in 2018. He'll also be looking to return to his Pro Bowl form from San Francisco, where he was a first-team All-Pro in 2012. Can Ziggy Ansah replace Frank Clark? That'll be the question Seahawks executives, coaches, and fans alike will be asking this season. In the last three years in Seattle, Clark had 31 tackles for losses and 32 sacks. Ansah, while he's been in the league longer than Clark, only got 25 TFLs and 18 sacks. The Seahawks will also rely on the defensive end LJ Collier from TCU for its pass rush in 2019. It's time to put this team under the microscope and go position by position to see where they stand as we head into the 2019 season. And we'll start on the offensive side of the ball at the quarterback position. The Seattle Seahawks are in great shape at the quarterback position with Russell Wilson at the helm. I don't care which way you order your top quarterback in the NFL list, but if Wilson isn't in your top three, your list is all wrong. And as long as he's under center in the Pacific Northwest, the Seahawks will have a chance. He's consistent, he's both accurate and dynamic, but most importantly, he's durable, having never missed a game in his career. But just in case, they are stable at the QB2 spot with former NFL starter Geno Smith, who was signed this offseason in free agency. Armed with explosiveness in the backfield, the Seahawks have a potent run game with both Chris Carson and Rashad Penny, the former top 1,100 yards last year, while the latter averaged nearly five yards a carry in a reserve role. I would expect Penny to start to earn more playing time and the trust of the staff this season as he's the game breaker of these two backs. Now, there is a battle for the RB3 spot between the versatile J.D. McKissick, C.J. Proceis, and rookie sixth-round pick Travis Homer out of Miami. The latter is also a fantastic special teamer as well, which could help his cause. And also, don't sleep on the fullback position here with both Nick Ballor and Bo Scarborough vying for that opportunity. Where the Seahawks upgraded this offseason is on the perimeter. Gone is longtime Seahawk Doug Baldwin, who was a legit dog down and down out game after game, for Seattle, and it's unfortunate that injuries forced him to retire as he was one of their most clutch and consistent players at the position. Now, in the draft, the Seahawks selected DK Metcalf out of Ole Miss, Gary Jennings out of West Virginia, and John Usur out of Hawaii, with all three bringing something different to the table, but all sharing the same positive trait, being able to track the football and catch the deep ball. Undrafted rookie free agent Jazz Ferguson out of Northwestern State is another big body wideout that's very similar to Metcalf and possesses those same traits. So they'll team up with Tyler Chunk Play Lockett, which could give the Seahawks its most dynamic core of receivers that we've seen. Now don't count out veteran guys like Jerron Brown and also David Moore and Amara Darbo as they'll factor in the mix as well. At the tight end position, it's hard to get a read on who's the guy for Seattle as Nick Van Eck. Will Disley and even Ed Dixon showed flashes of being that guy for this offense last season. Now, as a collection, it could be considered stable. I would also keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Justin Johnson out of Mississippi State as he has some untapped potential as a receiving threat as a flex tight end. 
The much maligned offensive line played better late last season, and I think they are on the path of building on that success in 2019. What gives me that confidence is the two interior acquisitions in Mike Upati in free agency and Phil Haynes out of Wake Forest in the NFL draft. Now, losing J.R. Sweezy left a hole at left guard, and Upati is slated to start there, giving them a former pro bowler at the position. Haynes graded out as the number two guard prospect in the draft by football game plan scouting, and the Seahawks are getting a legit lane opener at the position. Elsewhere, Dwayne Brown, Justin Britt, DJ Fluker, and Jermaine Effetti showed well in the run game and showed improvement in pass protection also. Building on that is key. Plus, the depth here is underrated in my opinion with Ethan Posick, George Fant, and second-year player Jamarco Jones providing some versatility along the offensive line. Now, here are my grades for the offensive units in Seattle. Along the defensive line is where we've seen the last overhaul of what we used to know of the Seahawks defense. So with a lot of new faces, they'll be expecting this group to not only overcome any inconsistency shown early on, but to produce as well. Now, there are some good veteran foundation pieces to work with in both Jerron Reed and Puna Ford on the interior. Reed racked up 10 and a half sacks last year and Ford came on strong as an undrafted free agent last season. I would expect a big jump from second year player Rasheem Green as well on the outside, but first round pick LJ Collier would be looked to have an immediate impact rushing the passer. The former TCU Horn Frog has a variety of ways of getting to the quarterback, which should help his transition be much easier. The Seahawks also signed Ziggy onside to handle the opposite end duties, and the hope is that he can get back to his double-digit sack ways of 2017. Now, there are some good rotational pieces up here that keep the unit fresh. At linebacker, Bobby Wagner continues to put together his future Hall of Fame career as he made his fifth Pro Bowl appearance last season, as well as being named to his fourth All-Pro team. K.J. Wright, a very good linebacker in his own right, will start alongside him once again this year. And on the opposite side, it's still up in the air whether or not they decide to go with Michael Kendricks or second-year player Shaquem Griffin. Now, I think Kendricks will get the nod as he played well last season before an injury. Griffin could see his role increase this year as I think he's a fantastic blitzer coming off the edge. And quietly, they got really good play last season from Austin Calitro, and now he'll give them excellent rotational depth on the outside. Barcavius Mingo will be asked to do much more and be much more productive as a pass rusher. And both rookies Cody Barton out of Utah and Ben Burkirvin out of Washington should thrive on special teams initially before finding their way onto the regular defense. I just like the speed, athleticism, and aggressiveness of this overall linebacking core. Trey Flowers turned in a really good rookie season on the corner last year after making a successful transition from being a college safety. His ability last year takes away one worry for Seattle in the secondary. Shaq Griffin at the other corner spot should as well as he started to play better toward the back end of the season. So did safety Delano Hill, and I would expect that he'd be hard-pressed to give up that starting role to Tedrick Thompson, but either way, it'll give them good depth. Rookie Marquise Blair out of Utah figures to be in the mix for the starting strong safety role with Bradley McDougal again, giving them good depth at that position. I think the signing of Jamar Taylor is a good one. He'll give them another veteran presence that can play inside or out. As this unit continues to fill itself out depth-wise, we'll see how quickly they can gel together and elevate. Now, here is how I graded the defensive units for Seattle. The Seattle Seahawks have one of the best quarterbacks in the game in Russell Wilson, and they added some weapons around him this year in Gary Jennings out of West Virginia and DK Metcalf out of Ole Miss to try to get the big play going in the passing game. We know they can run the football, they want to get those deep shots down the field. I'm going to draw up one way they can do so by utilizing play action and taking that shot deep down the field. And what I'm talking about here, you see we have a tight end on the line of scrimmage and we have Rashad Penny, who I think is one of the more explosive players on their team. It's going to be fun to see how he gets more acclimated to the offense this year. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Gary Jennings. And so what we're going to do is bring Lockett in motion, almost as if he's going to block on this play action run play here. We're going to fake to Rashad Penny set up back there in the pocket. And as we play fake, we're gonna bring Tyler Lockett over the middle of the field, trying to split those two safeties, which allows DK Metcalf to, again, since it's a play action, you wanna give him like a small hitch and go, take it deep down the field, create some separation. And Gary Jennings does a great job of just stacking defenders and running routes. So we're gonna bring him up through into the corner. And we know Russell Wilson has the accuracy to hit this whole shot deep on the corner to Gary Jennings. He has the, the arc to put that ball right where it needs to be out in front of Tyler Lockett. 
and we know he can drive the football deep down the sideline at DK Metcalf. So again, with their personnel, I do feel as though the Seattle Seahawks will be able to attack deep down the field now, which to me could potentially make their offense so scary because again, we know they can run the football. We know they were able to throw the football effectively in the intermediate level downfield and Russell Wilson is one of the deep ball passers, best deep ball passers in the game. Now you add him some ability to get deep down the field with those receivers and Metcalf and also Jennings, it could get scary out there in the Pacific Northwest. Despite trading away Frank Clark, the Seahawks are still serious about applying pressure and what they were able to bring in in the draft in LJ Collier out of TCU. And they were also able to sign Ziggy Ansah, the free agent from the Detroit Lions. So I'm gonna show you how they can apply pressure with their front four with throwing in a little bit of a linebacker blitz and second year player Shaquem Griffin, trying to get him going as far as what we know, he is an effective blitzer uh, coming off the corner. And so what we're gonna do here is just try to get space for Griffin to come right down that B gap and generate some pressure or A gap or, or so. So we're gonna send Ziggy Ansa to the outside. Puna Ford, we're gonna cross face of this guard, try to send him up. And Puna Ford had a really good year last year as an undrafted free agent, so glad to see him have some, some success. Jerron Reed, one of the better defensive linemen they have, getting that interior A gap pressure. And again, I'm a big fan of double A gap pressure, and we're gonna get number 49 on this strong side A gap, and we're gonna send LJ Collier to the outside. He has an opportunity to either sacrifice a gap and go inside or take it to the outside because I like what I see from him as far as what he is able to do in beating his guy one-on-one. -on -one. So we're gonna, now that we got the pressure going here, we're gonna bring Griffin right through that A gap. And we know once he blitzes, he, has, he is a heat seeking missile. He's one of those guys that looks to attack, looks to hit, blitzes with a purpose. That's why I like him blitzing whether it's an A or B gap or coming on the outside, I think Griffin is gonna be an effective blitzer for the Seahawks defense. We know what they have in their linebacking core and their ability to cover KJ Wright. They also, you also have all kind of good secondary players that they can get creative and match up with. But as far as blitzing with their front four and, and throwing in an additional linebacker here, this could also be Austin Calitro who did a good job last year stepping in uh, and playing well for this defense. So I think Seattle will be able to apply pressure even without uh, you know, a guy like Frank Clark that they let go to the Kansas City Chiefs, but they still have enough personnel on this team to be successful. And again, blitzing and pressure is all about attitude and want to, just like stopping a run. And we should see the Seattle Seahawks do a lot of that this year on defense. The Seattle Seahawks, Russell Wilson. We know how I feel about Russell Wilson. Uh, with the new scheme, I think that he'll be able to throw the ball a little bit more. We saw the receivers they drafted. You want to go get Russell Wilson. I think Russell Wilson has a good opportunity to be one of the top quarterbacks in all of fantasy football this season. We'll have a conversation about him, but he's, he's a guy. I think that he should be going in the sixth round as high as the fifth. I think you really do want him. So anyway, the running back position, I think it'll be less uh, of a standard than it has been. It doesn't mean that it's going to go away, but where they were running the ball 55% of the time, I think it flips to about 46 to 47% of the time at most uh, because I think they allow Russell Wilson to throw the ball a little bit more and utilize his legs a little bit more. Uh, not on design runs, but just when he needs to get out. So Chris Carson, good running back. He's done the job, but I think there'll be a, a bit of a split here as they try to get Rashad Penny more involved. You don't spend a first round pick for no reason. And Penny now being ingratiated into the new offense, I think will be schematically a good fit for it as well. From the receiving core position, Tyler Lockett's gonna be the number one guy because he has a rapport with Russell Wilson. Tyler Lockett's not a guy that you can take as early as he's going. He's going the late fourth to fifth and even at the latest sixth round. I can't put a fifth round value on him because I don't see the consistency yet. So until I see that, I couldn't draft him there. So I probably wouldn't have Tyler Lockett on my team. I could have DJ Met DK Metcalf on my team, especially if it's a standard league, uh, because DK Metcalf is a physical freak. And now he's gonna learn more in the NFL. And he's playing with a dude who might be the best deep ball thrower in the NFL. Yes, I know that there's Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes on the table. I've never seen a dude Again, a little hyperbolic, but all the guys that are in the NFL, 
The only guy that comes close to throwing a deep ball that looks similar to Russell Wilson is Aaron Rodgers, where they just throw these sky balls, and you're like, that's not going to get, oh, crap, that dropped in. Not even Patrick Mahomes does that. So, DK Metcalf could have a pretty big season, and you'll probably go in the double-digit rounds as far as receiver, and that's the place where he should go. Uh, keep Gary Jennings Jr. on the radar because he might be the most crisp of all the route runner and receiver out of all the guys they drafted. They drafted several guys. Uh, Ursa, I believe, was taken also out of uh, Hawaii. And then Will Disley rounds out the guys on this team at the tight end position. Um, if you're in dire, dire straight to take him because he's more of a blocker. He can receive the ball, but he, he's utilized in their offense to block. Troy Anthony here, bringing you the best bets for the Seattle Seahawks. The Seattle Seahawks win line is opening up at over under eight and a half games. Russell Wilson seems to always get it done for Seattle late in the season. At minus 139, I'm going with the over eight and a half games for Seattle. I think Russell takes them back to the playoffs. So I'm going with plus 122 for Seattle to make the playoffs. That's all for now. I'm Troy Anthony. Follow me on Twitter, at Football Fandom, replacing the O's with zeros. I'm David Hasagan, and this is Huddle Up with Hasagan. We're going to fire some quick takes about this year's Seattle Seahawks. Who are the breakout candidates you're looking for for Seattle for this season? Offensively, Jermaine Effetti. He had his best year last year at right tackle. I think he's going to have an even better year this year. Confidence is a, is a great thing. Yep. Look for him to take the next step forward. Puna Ford was an undrafted rookie free agent, undersized defensive tackle, 5'10", out of Texas. Played really well down the stretch has a chance to take that next step like we just talked about. Who are the big rookie guys? Obviously, a lot of talk about LJ Collier. Who do you think is going to be on the offensive side of the ball? Offensively, I'm going to go with DK Metcalf. They brought him yeah. in for a reason. Deep threat. Russell Wilson is one of the best deep ball throwers in the game. And you talked about LJ Collier. He's my defensive pick because of what he can do from a pass rushing perspective. He really jumped on my screen at the Senior Bowl. Then I went back and checked his film uh, during my, my scouting process and became impressed with what he can do uh, from a long arm standpoint, just really pushing himself into the backfield, but also is very stout versus the run. Who do you think the X-Factors are going to be for the Seahawks to really take over this division? Rashad Penny, the running back. I think he's going to have a breakout second season in the backfield. There's a reason why they took him in the first round. Game breaker in the backfield. Now you had a game breaker to this offense with the ability to throw the ball deep. Scary offense. And on defense, Ziggy Ansah, they need him to be the pass rusher they expected him to be coming out of college. He hadn't really been that threat uh, in right. Detroit, which is why he's not in Detroit. So let's see if he can be that guy in Seattle. Who do you think is going to be the impact rookies? Is anybody going to surprise us? I would say training camp surprise, Amara Darbo. I know he's been around, um, but he hasn't been healthy. That's right. what got him out of Seattle and got him back to Seattle because he fell to physical with the Patriots and mm -hmm. ended up uh, coming back to Seattle. I think he has a chance to surprise. He's healthy now, which is always a great thing. I also look at the two guys on defense. No one's talking about Brandon Jackson and Quinton Jefferson, two defensive linemen that have a really good chance to be significant players on defense. They were impactful when, when they were out there. I think they have a chance to really capitalize on that this season. What are your reasons for optimism and pessimism for this year for Seattle? Optimism, they made the playoffs last year with all kind of uh, chaos and problems going on yeah. and really pushed Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys to the brink last year in that playoff game. That's a big reason for Optimus. They have a great quarterback in, in uh, Russell Wilson. Defensively, they're going to be fine now that those young guys got a year of experience. Calls for concern. Let's say that defensive line. What if they can't find a pass rush now? You got rid of Frank Clark. Yeah. So there's your pass rush going out the window. What if Ziggy Ansah is just a guy, and now you still want to find some way to get to the quarterback and you can't? Could be a problem. Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook here, and joining me now is fellow football game plan analyst Troy Anthony for this Four Downs with the Czar segment, continuing our preview of the Seattle Seahawks. And we'll take a look at the road to the Super Bowl for the Seahawks, starting with the offense. A lot more was made of this offseason because they brought in DK Metcalf. They also added in, um, you know, Jazz Ferguson, who was an undrafted free agent. Gary Jennings was drafted out of uh, West Virginia. Deep threat John Ursua out of Hawaii was another outstanding option. All surrounding Tyler Lockett. You know, there's no more Doug Baldwin who retired. Can this receiving core with all these new pieces get up to speed will be the biggest question and answer that they'll have to have. Because if they are, and we know Russell Wilson does a great job of what? Throwing the deep ball. DK Metcalf, deep ball threat. We talk about Tyler Lockett, intermediate to deep ball threat. John Ursura was a guy that's a catch and run guy at Hawaii. Gary Jennings able to stack the receiver, deep ball threat. Jazz Ferguson, big time wide receiver, 
deep ball threat. So if they can elevate the passing game in conjunction with the, what we know they're going to do running the football, the offense could be unstoppable. Well, for that offense to be unstoppable, Russell Wilson's going to need some protection. That offensive line last year was short of abysmal. Russell Wilson was sacked 51 times. Now, this is Russell Wilson. Imagine if he wasn't ath as athletic as he is. We know he's one of the best quarterbacks to escape the pocket and throw on the run. If he was, if he had Eli Manning legs, that probably would have been be close to already. 80 sacks. <laughs> right. Exactly. He was sacked 51 times. This offense has, this offensive line has to do a way better job for him to be able to get the ball to these receivers, for these receivers to be able to develop for him. I think defensively, they got to get back to being defensive. You know, when the Seahawks were in Super Bowls and, and competing for championships, their defense was the most feared thing. That's the one team on the schedule that you saw. You're like, hey, I don't want to play Seattle because of their defense. You know, that worried you more than anything else that they brought to the table. I think with a lot of the moving parts and, and moving pieces, losing Frank Clark and, and, you know, now revamping the entire secondary, can their defense get back to being the bullies on the block? If they can get back to being bullies, and being the most feared unit in the league, this team can go far. Yeah, that's going to be tough. They've, Frank Clark, Earl Thomas, it seems like season after season, they just lose another star, another star, another star. it would be interesting to see what they can do this season. But back to offensively, I with Russell Wilson running around, escaping the pocket, I need him to have an emergence of a tight end one. We don't know what's going on with him the past few seasons. Once Jimmy Graham left, even though Jimmy Graham didn't put up Saint numbers there, he was Russell Wilson's go-to. He just tossed the ball up to him. Last season, we had Will Disley, the rookie, come in, put up numbers for three weeks, then he was done. The rest of the season, it was like, who is it, Vanette? Is it Dixon? Is it Vanette? Is it Dixon? We really didn't have an answer there. So this season, I'm going to need an emergence of a tight end one to be Russell Wilson's safety blanket, just in case he has to run for his life again. It is amazing to watch Russell Wilson get out there and play quarterback because when you look at his numbers, He's putting up the same numbers as Aaron Rodgers. And no one talks about Russell Wilson being the best quarterback in the game because he is, in my opinion, top two. It's him and Brady. You can rank him how you want to, but I'll take Russell Wilson. If that defense can get up to what it was, along with this offense, could potentially be with those receivers and Rashad Penny uh, looking to be a more of a game-breaking threat this year. Seattle can find themselves in a third Super Bowl under Russell Wilson's leadership. I have the Seahawks finishing second in the NFC West. I think people will be surprised at how explosive their offense will be this upcoming season, paving the way for them to make a serious run at the top of the division. Now, what could get them to the top and what could get them deep into the playoffs would be how quickly both sides of the line of scrimmage gel and build on what they put on tape last season. The Seahawks, in my opinion, are definitely a playoff team. So that's it for this season preview. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of our social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to Football Game Plan Podcast on iTunes, where you can find our NFL All 32 podcasts, our fantasy football starting lineup, as well as our scout team podcast and leave us a five-star rating. Also subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Finally, every Thursday and Friday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, be sure to check out the Football Game Plan show on the Game Plus Network. Check with your cable provider for channel listings.